welcome to Field Ecology. We'll be studying ecology here. So what is ecology? Be able to define that here in the today's objective. Listen to find Tim Bergen's four levels of explanation. Do know that we're going to come back to that, and we're going to come back to that pretty heavily in a lecture that actually has Tim Bergen's four levels of explanation in it. Be able to list and define levels at which ecology is studied. This is something you want to know for the rest of the class. So at what level are we looking at ecology? Is this organismal level? Is this population level? This is something you really want to be able to uh, pull through the entire course. And of course, relate ecology to other sciences. I want you guys to create a network of, uh, of thoughts, you know, a network of brain cells on where ecology fits in all of this. So what you're going to see me doing today is we got the definition, the objectives right here. I don't know if you're familiar or not with the objectives, but basically these are the things that I'll be able to put on exams later on. So every day we're going to start with objectives and every day that's going to have a exam questions related to it. There's nothing on the syllabus on the exam. Just no, that's that's no, we don't do that here. But the objectives are going to be driving the exam questions. So do you know beef up on those. And I'm going to be writing down a series of notes as well. So the notes are going to appear down there in um, a little text box. And I'm also going to be writing poorly up here. You may or may not see this. It's the same word. And it will help you follow along with the notes that I've provided in Moodle as a Word document. So you can type up your notes or print it out and sketch it or just write them down. So it's really up to you. You know, these are your notes. You make them your own. I'm just providing a bare bones outline. So there'll be plenty of times where I'll write something and I'll talk for a while. And if something gets of interest or helps you learn, you can um, you can start writing that down. You can fast forward through that as well, but you might miss something useful too. So the benefit with the videos is when you come back to review, you can fast through it forward through a lot of this. All right, so what is ecology? It's the interaction between organisms and their environment. The interaction between an organism and the environment. Define the organism, define the environment. So this is a uh, this is an ambush bug that you may see on a goldenrod. So this little uh, this little bug down there is this ambush bug. It uh, it's jagged ambush bug is the name, and it's actually green and brown during the summer. They turn to uh, yellow and brown during the autumn, and they've got large forelimbs that they use to just grab onto other insects, and then they just eat them. They've got kind of odd points to them, so that's why they're jagged, and they ambush things, so they're ambush. And they hide in the flowers in the fall of goldenrod, and this goldenrod is, well, yellow, so they can grab passing bees. Or not passing bees, but bees that visit, they can grab onto it and eat. So they're an interesting little organism, and their whole environment is just a stand of goldenrod. So there's a stand of goldenrod in, in amidst a bunch of grasses there, and that's in Buffalo, New York, that little patch there is a small stand of goldenrod. All those are clones. That's actually only one plant. And if you look behind, you see a gray. That's a medical center. And that's going to be on Military Boulevard. And Military Boulevard is a main thoroughfare. And if you were to zoom out, you're going to see that that is an isolated patch of goldenrod in an isolated drainage ditch in a huge city. So we are moving from the organism to a very large scale. That is a jagged ambush bug in a huge context. But that organism is really only interacting with that one patch of goldenrod and the other things that visits it. So how that organism works and what it does, that's ecology. Why does it turn from green to yellow? Well, it's, its environment changes when the goldenrod flowers. What kind of insects does it eat? Well, things that visit goldenrod. What is the temperature it's exposed to? What is the shade? What is all of this? This is all defined by its environment and how this organism lives is defined by the environment, and that is going to be ecology. Now, ecology interacts with evolution. You may have taken the Bio 142 course just before this. If so, that's basically ecology and evolution. And we discussed different ecological principles and different evolutionary principles. And if you are following... Um, Bio 142 with your Bio 359, you're going to see a lot of the same things play out because that's ecology, but you're going to be missing out on a lot of the Hardy Weinberg. Now, I'm saying missing pretty generously there. So the next course I'll be offering is actually evolution. And it's a little cheat you can do is Bio 142, 359, and 344. 
a lot of the examples flow through there and just get deeper. So that's actually a really good series of courses to take because each one builds very nicely off of the other because ecology and evolution work well together. So we're going to cover these later, and this will go in much more in depth in a different lecture, different video. You can actually find this Tinbergen and I think weird types of sexual selection. It's interesting. But there's approximate scale. This is what we call ecological time. And then there's the ultimate scale, which we call evolutionary time. So if we're looking at interactions between organisms and their environment, that's going to be on approximate scale. If we're looking at interactions between organisms as they evolve and change to a dynamic system, that's your evolutionary time scale. And that's uh, things like adaptation or descent. So what advantage does an organism gain in terms of fitness? How does this organism's ancestors, um, how, how does their physiology play into this organism's physiology? That's descent. We're going to be looking on the ecological time for most of this course, where we deal with mechanisms, with the organismal biology and development and learning and behavioral biology. So that's, that's where we're going to be focusing in on. And this is a field ecology course. There's neat. There's neat. There's neat. Field ecology is outdoors. Now, you may be watching this from home, and your outdoors is different than my outdoors. It's fine. Ecology still works. Some of the organisms will probably be the same. But we're going to be outdoors as often as we can get outdoors and get right out there as soon as we can when the weather is still good. Um, what we're going to learn is we're going to learn different techniques. Things like this quadrat. Don't, don't throw the quadrats. Ours aren't made for that. So learning the different ecological techniques is something that we need to master in field ecology. How do you take a transect? How do you take a quadrat? Um, how do you do uh, height at let's say height at breast level? So like uh, what's let's say dense let's see um, how how wide is a tree? So is a diameter at breast height? DBH. There we go. Um, those kind of things are necessary. There's statistics. Yeah, it's useful to learn statistics if you're in biology, and you're going to need these later on in life, unless you're going into uh, genetics, really. So even then, they do have some amount of statistics that happen in their papers. So it's useful to know the difference between a t-test and, 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 and an ANOVA. And last, for field ecology, you will gain local knowledge. Now, I'm going to try to help you out with this. We're going to have certain touchstones of organisms that we're going to come back to a lot. You're going to get sick of those organisms. That's fine. Look at how they interact with their environment. Look at how they interact with other environments. Sorry, organisms. Look at how they serve as an environment for other organisms. So we're going to see that kind of local knowledge coming forth. The cedar tree is an organism that lives in moister woodland environments. The cedar tree is an environment for certain perching passerine birds. Those birds are themselves environments for lice and such. So learning this local knowledge is key for field ecology. Now, your local knowledge can differ from my local knowledge, and that's fine. If you've got coquie frogs that you're looking at, um, that's kind of interesting, too. They're nifty organisms. If you've got naked mole rats in your backyard, well, first off, congrats on being in Africa during this. That's kind of actually really nifty. Um, but that's your local knowledge. Everyone who has a deep local knowledge is an ecologist because they understand what time of the year the termites fly. They understand where the bats nest. They understand what trees grow under which other trees. Everyone who has deep local knowledge becomes an ecologist, and every ecologist gains knowledge, at least local knowledge to an extent, and then when they're forced to move, more local knowledge. So if you move an ecologist, they become a lot dumber all of a sudden. I've, I've learned this as I moved out west. I suddenly didn't know anything. It was... Yeah, local knowledge is essential to field ecology, and hopefully you'll learn a few species. So what are these levels of ecology? So there's ecophysiology starting down at the, uh, at the bottom here with that zebra picture. So ecophysiology is your uh, organismal ecology, or how your organism reacts to the environment, has adapted to the environment. So your water relations, your heat relations. Population ecology, there's Hardy Weinberg there, but there's also demographics, the rise and fall of populations, the birth rates, the death rates, all of those things. 
community college. You get this a little more dense and get a little more interaction with some food webs. So that's going to be some food webs and how uh, different types of bees may compete for flowers. That's community ecology. Ecosystem studies, getting up a whole other level to involve more abiotic factors. <coughs> In the summers, the fires rage across the Willamette prairies. When the fires rage across the Willamette prairies, they take down Scotch broom and they allow the camas to rebloom the next year. So when the camas has come back and the Scotch broom has not, and you see camas flowers instead of Scotch broom flowers, how is that ecosystem changing for the pollinators that would visit each? So Bombus Vosnesensky, your yellow-faced bee, is going to choose between camas and Scotch broom. And that choice is based on the ecosystem and how the ecosystem has been changed by fire. It's all related. Then there's GIS studies. We're looking at like global studies, so global information. You got, glo you got a regional kind of um, outlook. In Argentina, they do GIS studies just by flying a plane over the area in the spring to see what patches of yellow indicate scotch broom and flowers. So that is a regional study to find out how big the patches are, how fast they're growing across the landscape. We can even relate things to the whole biosphere. So how are temperatures in the North Atlantic changing? And how would a sudden influx of cold water, cold fresh water off of Greenland influence the global, um, the global water conveyor belt? So there is a large amount of ecology that can be studied on various levels. So this is fun because you choose your level. But understand, you can't start in one place with ecology. You can't start with one organism in ecology. Everything's connected. It is like jumping into a plate of spaghetti and just grabbing a noodle. That noodle is touching a lot of other noodles. So if you had to remove that noodle and all the other noodles, you just pick up the whole spaghetti because everything's interacting with each other. This isn't like a waffle where you just have one little compartment and another little compartment. Today I'll learn about the digestive tract. The other day I'll learn about the muscles. Well, no, if you're going to be learning about ecology, today you're going to learn about how a tree, a certain species of tree, its presence or absence is going to determine whether a lizard lives in an area. Well, why? Oh, the insects on the tree are food for the lizard on certain seasons and other foods during other seasons. And the tree influences the shade, influences the shade which changes what the lizard can and cannot live. There's all these different interactions in ecology. So it's impossible to start anywhere. And, okay, it's possible somewhere. I guess we're going to have to, but do know it does interact everywhere. And ecology interacts with policies, too, at all scales. So the pollution that is dumped into a stream is not only going to affect the organisms, it's going to change populations. It's going to, by changing populations, you change the community. When you change the community, the effects in the ecosystem bounce back. So there are interactions everywhere in ecology, and that's part of the fun of it. Oh yeah, sorry, we're going to focus on those first three, of course, because ecosystem studies are a bit more um, geographical. We're not going to head out that way just yet. So local knowledge. What's going on here? There's a picture of a forest understory, and you may say, well, there's a non-green plant and a bunch of green plants. So that non-green plant, plant, I believe that's Monotropa uniflora, or a similar one. I do know that it is a plant in the Ericaceae, which is the blueberry family. And that plant has no leaves. At least not photosynthetic ones. Those are parasites. And those parasites are specific to a hemlock tree. You can see the hemlock leaves next to that non-green plant. Um, they're the pine needle-like leaves. You can see the dead growth, or the dead plants nearby. So they are decaying. And when they're decaying, there's obviously fungi. Turns out that that Ericaceae parasite is actually parasitizing the fungi that are interacting with the hemlock, and also interacting with the decaying wood. That purple flower in the background is an orchid. It is also parasitic, and it's parasitizing the hemlocks as well. So I can tell that there are several plant parasites here that are just sticking their flowering stems above. And if you look also, you can see some bear grass, these little tufts of what looks like tufts of grass. It's actually a species of lily. And that means this is a higher altitude hemlock forest. So Higher altitude hemlock forest, we've got acidic soil, if you've got these ericaceae, you've got some moss growing on there. And you still also have some of these, um, I think those are cornice type plants or something like that. But those are those um, wide leaf plants indicate this is a moister soil. So this is somewhere in the mountains and somewhere in the mountains that is going to have like a cleft of several mountains, moderately protected from wind. 
That's what's going on. It's an elevation above 500 feet, but below um, 5,000 feet. I mean, that's pretty broad scale there, but more likely between 1,000 and 3,000 feet. So you can tell that based on the organisms, what the environment must be. And that's where local knowledge really comes in handy. And that's where ecology comes in handy. If you know the organisms, you know where you are. So fun little thing for being an ecologist, if you got dropped in the woods, you'd be able to figure out pretty quickly where you are based on what organisms are interacting with your environment. So ecology relates to a lot of different things. So you got relations Ecology and chemistry. We'll be discussing nutrient cycling. Carbon to nitrogen ah, right, ratios, autocorrect. Defense chemistry, pheromones. These are all chemical things. Ecology and physics. There's the physiology. Well, the basic constraints on physiology are entropy and other physics characteristics. There's physics of carbon dating things, and that'll tell, that'll tell you how deep a soil is or how long since the plant's been buried. Ecology and math. Oh, yes. Plenty of math here. There should be a math co-rec for this, but there isn't. The, there is a ecology of statistics. There is population biology is math heavy. Population biology, math heavy parts can be done by Excel, so that's easy enough. But yeah, ecology has a lot of relations with a lot of different fields. And the idea of ecology is really the idea of interactions, not only between organisms and their environment, organisms and each other, but between ecology and the many other fields. So where are we go. I'm going to start off with physiology. I say it's impossible to start anywhere, but you kind of have to. When I start off with the physiological limits of things, well, we can start thinking about hot biomes and aquatic and terrestrial and where that goes. And we're going to start with the physiology. What limits an organism to where it actually lives? What parts of the environment are going to influence the organisms? We're going to move on to populations, the population biology. We're going to, not, not much on Hardy Weinberg there. Demography, a little on evolution. Sexual selection is a fun one because that inter inter interacts with um, or how organisms are going to work with one another. And then there's community too. So community interactions, community structure. We're going to take a bit of a detour into invasive species because that's my specialty. And because I can teach that best, we're going to learn that here. It's Something, if, if I know something deeply, I may as well share what I can for you guys because you can get it, you know, best options. So that's where we're up to. That's the path ahead through this winding forest. By the way, that's Mount Eleanor in case you want to go over there. There's great plants and a great biome shift if you want to start down at Big Creek Campground and hike all the way to the top of Mount Eleanor. You get to really know the local ecology and you get really tired too. So, yeah, that's a good recommendation. Go for a walk. Uh, wherever you are right now, I encourage you to go for a walk. Go outside and look at the organisms. Look at the environment. You will, you will learn a lot just by going for a walk. As I said, if you gain deep local knowledge into organisms and the environment, you become an ecologist. I'm just here to teach you the field techniques and some good statistical tricks. So that's where we're going. You're going to become an ecologist probably out of curiosity with what you see around you. And you can still be a doctor and all, and still be an ecologist when you go and when you garden. 